coming down the track I thought it was for me, that's a fact But the whistle kept it blowing And that train kept it rolling I hope like hell it won't be coming back Hell's train's coming I keep yelling it's a lie It wasn't me that robbed them Mugged them up and shot them Black smoke keeps belching at the sky Hell's train's coming No come to life on the screen right in front of you. Today, we have the massacre at Ellsberg Junction. Come see the Wild West back when it was still wild. William Boyd, Fred. Ma'am. Now, that's the woman I could look up to. <laughs> well, Willie, you look up to everything except snakes, lizards, and fallen drunks. Come on, ma'am. Bring your little boy here. He's going to love this. Only two pennies gets you right on in here. Shepard, sit down. Shepard, Galloway. Very stinking savages. Pepper, would you mind not cursing your children's dressing? Pepper, please. What blue blazes you want, Mrs. Delman? Pepper, just don't curse. Little ears. Well, just because your husband's a damn marshal don't mean you can boss me. And as far as I'm concerned, you and that little britches of yours can kiss my ass. Oh! such behavior, uh, oh, Mrs. Stillman, uh, um, you and your son, please stay for our next show. I assure you, sir, I am not really oh, to no, 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 sometimes circumstances cause, uh, uh, make, uh, please enjoy our show. Pepper's out of control again. Looks like he's done lost his rudder. Yeah, well, you ask me, he needs his attitude adjusted. Dang. 
Queen. Kisser in this whole town. Sure. <laughs> you kiss better sober. <laughs> see no cameras. Indeed, sir. I tell the camera operators what to shoot. Then you should be good at telling the bartender that I need some whiskey and good stuff. I ain't used to drinking no rot gut. Excuse me. Allow me to introduce myself. Sea Lake, Eagle Film Company. This is Goldman, our director. Now, my fine man, we're having a little meeting here, but as soon as we are done... We would love to have you join us. Yeah, well, now I will direct you to be gone. Well, how about if I direct you to dance? Up. Put it down. I said put it down. You draw that gun, and you won't be running upstairs with Bell anytime soon. Gosh, Marshall, I was just funning. Now, the name's Charles Tillman, but you can call me Chuck. Little Mary. Bat, Chuck, get this bushwhacker and his genius friends out of my saloon. 
Let him cool off for a day or two. I ain't going to no jail. Call not using that pea shooter of yours. No sense anybody getting hurt for no reason. You must be Marshal Bill Tillman, the way you handled that situation. Could be. Who wants to know? William Seelig, Eagle Film Company. Mr. Selig. Seelig. That's what I said. Selig. Uh, this is our director, Herr Goldman. Herr Tillman. And this is Edith Hathaway, our production supervisor. I tell you, if she doesn't like it, it's out of the picture. And this is my daughter, Melody, fresh from St. Mary's Seminary. Hollywood land. Yes, sir. California. Mm, yes, sir. What do you want with me? Mr. Tillman, sir, we have a proposition for you. I don't know why you still let Pepper just cause trouble all the time. And then what? He's out in one, two days? Just leave him in there. Pretty good at that knife, Malachi, but you best be real careful. Yes, sir, Marshal T. Daddy, did you hear what Mom did? Daddy must have been fighting again. What? Heard she dropped a cowpoke with one punch. Come on. Where's your mother? In the barn with Victor. Go on, make yourself useful. You tell Mama we'll be in in a minute. Bye, Mrs. T. Becky, I've set a place for you at the table. Oh, well, thank you, Mrs. T. I, I would love that. Well, I know that I should have known better, you one-eyed grouch. But I couldn't help myself. It's just going on and on like he always does. It's just so hard not to just take him to... Oh. Hi. <clears throat> uh, I don't know what happened. Okay, I do know what happened. It was that troublemaker, Will Pepper. He was just going on and on, cussing in the flicker tent, and then I just couldn't take it anymore, so just... Ow! He went down. Impressive. Look, I feel awful. I know you're the marshal, and I look like a common fighting so, in the streets. You just got to stop popping, folks. You're getting a reputation. <laughs> I'm hungry. Okay. Think you can hold a fork with this hand? <laughs> I'll do just fine with this one. Hmm. Go on, get. Thanks for listening. Don't be so grouchy next time. Malachi, how's your daddy doing? Fine, ma'am. He's working late as usual. It's the reason your dad's the best gunsmith around, because he works at it. Now, boys, you remember that. That's a good lesson. Because your daddy, Malachi, does not sit around all day whittling his life away. No, sir. He 
actually works at a respectable craft, and everybody is proud to own a Woody Jeffries gun because there just ain't none better. Well, now, Mama, Malachi does work all his days at his daddy's shop, and Tench is apprenticing at the livery, and he goes to school. So can they take a little time to eat dinner? I guess so. But when I was young, nobody worked as hard as we did coming up. Mama, could we get on with it before the food gets too cold to eat? I guess so. Chuck? Oh, Pa, you know I'm no good at giving the blessings. Tench. Thank you, Lord, for the food. And please, Lord, help Mama be more tolerant of those she doesn't understand. Hmm. And Lord Jesus, help this old woman to remind these boys she's the one that cooks the food that puts in their smart little mouths. Amen. 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 It's a good point, Mama. Boys, don't mess with the cook. Ain't that right, Frankie? Right, Pop. Never mess with the cook. <laughs> Feel like drying some dishes? What's wrong? You okay? I had an interesting proposition today. Kind of my own flicker experience. You were at the show? I didn't see you there. No. Down at the saloon. Some folks from California, they want to put me on the screen. <laughs> There's not a big enough one out there. It's true. This Hollywood fella wants Bat Bear and me to make a picture show about outlaws. The thing is, is they want us, not play actors, us. Wait, you're serious? And so they, uh, they want to use real outlaws too. This bull goose named Selly, he said the people back east are clamoring for the real thing, not make-believe. Now, he knows Tom Osborne at the territorial prison. He said we could get out a few prominent hard cases, have them rob the bank, there'll be this big shootout, and we'll lock them up. And would you believe it's only gonna take two weeks to make this thing happen? Sounds like a good way to get yourself shot. No, no, no real bullets. And the prisoners, they will always be under guard. Bill, this sounds like you're actually considering this nonsense. The dime novels are everywhere making outlaws into heroes. Scoundrels, murderers, and thieves is all they are, but to the folks back east, they're heroes. This could be an opportunity to show them what it used to be like. Besides. Oh my. more money than you've made in the past five years. Yep. And Bat and the boys will get a good payday as well. What do you think? I think I'm going to say yes before they come to their senses. All right, then. Incredible. Magnificent. I do a look at this. It's like a blank canvas just waiting for art. William, we've called our entire population and selected a few of our more stellar residents for you to choose from. Excellent. They're not pretty, but we've spiffied them up for the occasion. And I guarantee they will be on their best behavior. Dogs, line them up. 
All right, you adults, get in line. Gentlemen, Marshall Tillman and these Hollywood flicker men are here for a reason. And it's not because they want to look at your pretty faces. No, they want to put eight of you fine aristocrats in a moving picture. <laughs> You'll be ten feet tall on the big screen and live forever. Now, Mr. Tillman has arrested many of you over the years. And it looks like he's going to get the chance to do it again. In our moving picture, you're going to pretend to rob a bank. And Mr. Tillman and his men are going to pretend to arrest you. Pardon the interruption there, Your Honor, but uh, what do we get out of this? Except in the pleasure of Tillman's sorry company. Well, the seven or eight men we choose will be put up in the finest hotel in Fort Bowers. And you will dine on steak and apple pie and apple. Every night, our budget allows for two whiskeys and one good cigar. And if you have a woman, well... And, uh, what's to keep us from having a fine meal and a good cigar and then beating boots out of town? Mm, good question. The warden has also agreed to loan us some of his best guards. Anyone trying to escape? Well... <laughs> But for two weeks, gentlemen, you will be in tall cotton. Look, if you're not interested, I get it. Step back. All right, we'll move amongst you. We'll pick our eight men. Cole? Tillman. You're looking old. Beat's not looking old, I guess. I wasted time. Now time wastes me. Still taking a shine to Shakespeare. All the world's a stage, and all the women and men like to play. Great Caesar's ghost. That's Cole Younger in the flesh. He's got to be in the picture. Guaranteed trouble. People will line up to see the man who was shot 17 times in Northfield, Minnesota. Yeah. What's wrong with him? He wound up on the wrong side of the law. Hmm. Nobody paid to see him. Murphy. Mr. Tillman, I never thought I'd see you after the trial. I told it like it was. Your testimony left me to rot in this hellhole. Nothing would satisfy me more than have you rot with me. You gut shot an old man. He was cheating at cards. He was drunk. He deserved it. You deserve it, and that's why you're here. You took away my freedom, Tillman. I want it back. They should have hung you. <sighs> Tell me, Bill, how is young Mrs. Tillman? Zoe, is it? <laughs> you tell she's, uh, pleasing. Don't. <laughs> oh, temper, Bill. Idle threats don't become a man of your stature. You're right. What's the point of idle threats? <laughs> Don't you ever speak of my wife again. Circumstances have me at a bit of a disadvantage, Marshal, but perhaps fate will afford us another opportunity. Circumstance be damned. Let's finish it! I think he's done. All right. All right. Let me go. Big Joe? What do you think? Is that Bear? In the flesh. Thought he'd be dead by now. Yeah, well, he came close once or twice, but, uh... 
think he saw Jesus, but he sent him back. Hmm. I thought Jesus was. Joe, you want to be in this moving flicker? You know, I saw a moving picture once with Miss Lillian Gish. Yeah, it's parading around like a ballerina. I was never more in love with a woman. <laughs> I think I saw that down in New Orleans. That's where I saw Jesus. Like Bear. Yeah, down in New Orleans. Okay, BT. Yeah, I'll be in your moving picture. As long as my brother can do it, too. See if we was on the screen together? Be like a walk in heaven. Sounds dumb. <laughs> I don't know. Makes sense to me. Where's your brother? Beats me. If you're Big Joe, is there a little Joe? <laughs> his mother's watching him. He's got his condition. This chicken man, what's wrong with him? <laughs> Sad case. He got on the wrong side of the law. Mm -hmm. I hear a pardon's coming down the road any day now. Yeah, nobody would pay to see him, so. What up, Murphy? <laughs> Murphy and his henchmen have been the bane of my existence for six months. Mm -hmm. They go, or no one goes. Please tell Mr. Murphy that we sure would appreciate him and his uh, friends in our picture. Right. Okay, gentlemen. They have made their decision. I'm sorry we can't take all of you, uh, but if the picture makes a profit, we'll be back. And before we announce our selected cast, uh, we are elated to announce that the celebrated Frank James has agreed to appear in our picture show. You didn't tell me you hired James. You know Frank and Cole rode together, right? Ooh. That news didn't reach California. Sure right? it did. The reunion will be legendary. Legendary. And dangerous. Pondering, Cole. Turns life takes. More like robbing a bank one day, then play acting the next? Now they're gonna pretend to arrest us for pretending to rob a bank. <laughs> we all become who we pretend to be. Is that so? You ever pretend, Cole? I never pretended to do a thing in my life. I noticed a change in your countenance. You're obsessed reading that book constantly. But you think it's gonna capture all your demons? <laughs> Let me tell you how this is gonna go. No man gets out of this life alive. It's like your little novel says, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Yeah, I just been thinking, Murphy, there's gotta be a better way. I ain't to find it. I ain't like you. Got a wife and kids back at the holler. When I leave this place, I'm gonna find us some peace. You'd be a fool to think you're finding that book. Redemption awaits for those who seek it. Let me be clear with you, Joe. Redemption is not at all what I seek. Let's go, Joe. Well, all seems to be going well with our wild bunch. You know, if we had a few more of our desperados, we would have had our dirty dozen. If you add any more, I quit. And just call them outlaws, because that's all they are. Nothing more, and sure is certain, nothing less. I think we just named our picture. Bill Tillman and the Outlaws.
Come the old medicine show right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. to town. What's this world coming to? Well, Marshal Tillman, this is something indeed. Reverend Lowe, indeed. <laughs> well, would you look at that? Cole Younger. Marshal! Dagnabbit, Marshal! You gotta let me out of here! Why, that's Cole Younger! And him and I are like that! Oh, I seriously doubt that. Oh, all right. Go ahead and let all three of them out. They're smelling up the place anyway. I hear you're gonna be filming even on Sundays. It's not my idea. Everybody works for somebody. I'll be holding services anyway. It may just be me and my maker, but spreading his word. Sorry, I won't be able to spread it to the likes of these desperate. Your wife tells me the Grange is planning some sort of celebration to welcome Mr. Seelig and his movie crew. Charity warrants that we extend that invitation to include our prisoners. Really? Yeah. I hadn't heard. More good news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dave's just get better, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Come on in, gentlemen. One at a time. You know the drill. It's going to be sentimental. It's going to be gorgeous. We have to find a way to work that in. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? I would challenge you to a battle of wits. I see you are unarmed. <laughs> so you make sure you keep track. Hey! Hey, Mr. Younger! Remember me? <laughs> well, well, well. The great Will Pepper. A long time. Yeah, I used to ride with you. Yes, yes, you did. For almost five full days, as I remember. Well, I'm friends with Frank James now. Really? Well, ain't that something extra? Will you make sure to meet up with me in the next day or two, and uh, we'll relive old times? Yes, sir, Mr. Younger. Cole, sir. And thus do I make my fool my purse.
younger. Alice Thompson. Ho oh, oh. ho. A beautiful Alice. To be wooed and won. <laughs> <laughs> For you, Mr. Younger. <laughs> and this pungent relic remained behind for the last time you graced me with your present? <laughs> <laughs> Big Joe, I would like to introduce you to Alice Thompson. She is the former owner of the premier social club in Sweetwater. Howdy. My pleasure, Mr. Come on! Come! Hell no, where's my good for nothing? No. Come on! Come on! You ain't caring nothing, are you, Miss Darling? Oh, hell no! I'm just here to see my good for nothing son. Where is he? <laughs> Would you come on! Howdy. That's better. Little Joe! <laughs> oh, this is gonna be one fun night. <laughs> Gentlemen, gentlemen, oh, and ladies, we hope you've been enjoying Fort Bowers' hospitality. Mr. Goldman and I ask for your undivided attention, please. We'd like to introduce the esteemed mayor of Fort Bowers, Jonathan Gray. Good morning. I know you folks ain't used to many surprises, but before Mr. Seeley puts you to work tomorrow, the fine folks of Fort Bowers have drummed up a special this evening. But I need your word of honor that you're going to be on your best behavior. Pretty man. <laughs> the sun rises and the sun sets, and there ain't nothing prettier than you, my Juliet. <laughs> that is Shakespeare. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll never be a coal younger. <laughs> and my name's not Juliet, but I do thank you for the compliment. Oh, making rhymes helps pass the times when uh, you're in prison. Imagine so, John. How do you know my name? It's my job. <laughs> Sweetheart, we need you to take some ropes on costumes. Will you excuse us? Uh, hey, oh, uh, wh what's your name? Melody. Melody? It's Melody. Cool. 
to marry. Rum and sugar be a fault. God bless the wicked. The infamous Cole Younger. The infamous guest Cole Younger. Frank James. <laughs> no, I haven't touched a drop since Northfield. Yeah, that was a while ago. Frank James, haberdasher. <laughs> Time heals all wounds. Not all, Cole. Uh, if so, it's the grave. Frank James. <laughs> I hear tell Frank James is going to be joining the less fortunate amongst us to rob a bank. It's entertainment, Cole. Entertainment. That's all it is. Oh, yeah. I can be very entertaining. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on this historic occasion. Times have been hard for many of us here in Fort Bowers. I hear you, Bill Tilgman's oldest boy. And what are you yapping on about? Outlaw? <laughs> you tough like your daddy? Ain't got no badge. Pay no attention to him. Straight up, Junior. You get a punch, I get a punch. We'll flip to see who goes first. Don't be a fool. If you think that Relax. I'm going to stand here and watch you do this again... It's just good, clean fun. The Grove. This is only gonna hurt for a little while. Now, are you gonna taunt me to death? Or are you gonna tighten up those britches and fight? Why, well, you arrogant little pissant! <laughs> Gentlemen. Mr. Masterson, can I interest you in a cigar? You two aren't celebrating. Too old, I reckon. Maybe old, but I am still strong and lusty. Rusty? Did you say rusty? <laughs> you know, there was a time, Mr. Matheson. How about I will have a cigar if you will join me in a drink? And what would we be drinking to, Mr. Masterson? To a long, peaceful life. Well, sir, that I will drink to. Been thinking, how did you two good souls crawl into so many dark holes? Maybe a couple of young man brothers were riding back to Missouri from the state's war. They get home, and the new order has given their farm to a yank. That's okay. Carpet bagger offered him a job on their own farm, slapping hogs. Same thing in town, too. Sweep my floors, Reb. Clean out this platoon, Reb. Hell, couldn't vote, couldn't even preach in a church. Well, you preach it. I'm missing the point, Masterson. It's not that I wanted to. Said I couldn't. 
Maybe these fellas could think that the bankers and the carpetbaggers that took all their money deserve to be got after. Huh. For example? Huh? You are talking metaphorically, aren't you there, Frank? I mean, you're not saying that we were robbing anybody. Still, if some of those land robbers and garbage beggars took a bullet, for example, what are you, his lawyer? Who could say who's the bad guy here, for example? I mean, they're just trying to get back what these people took from them. To brighter days, gentlemen. May all our dark holes be filled with light. Yes, to that I will drink. Well, Bat, I'm gonna pass on that drink because I kinda like having a little darkness with my light. <laughs> I guess we're just more comfortable living with our shadows, Bat. Well, hell. I'll drink to that. like your authority. I dub thee Zoe, queen of clubs. And I a mere knave at your service. You are an animal, Mr. Murphy. That's why you are in a cage. You are so penetrating. It's a shame you have to live in the shadow of a man. BT will kill you for this. Yes, well, on that very matter, you look at what I have here. <laughs> You're a saloon keeper's wife. You know what they call this little old player here, don't you? The Suicide King. And he leaves a widow queen to tend to the orphan. <laughs> Oh, the touch of a woman, it has been too long. Go light, I'm someone else, Murphy. I am merely servicing you with an advanced courtesy of how this game is gonna be played, my queen. Time to leave the table. Oh, and why would I do that? Man, we have one, four, six, eight, ten. Ow! Oh, shut up. You deserve it. <sighs> oh, something wrong? It's just Murphy's acting a fool again. No, leave him be. Please, let's just go home. 
right. Move along, gentlemen. Hey, where's your Alice? No telling. I sure did rattle Tillman's woman tonight. I'll find you face down in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> Maybe so. But Tillman would be bleeding in the mud with me. Murphy, just back off. What for? Never mind, just back off. Ruin everything. Oh, Younger, you are up to something. Not here, Murphy. Come on, C come on, Cole. As long as Tillman's mine, I want in, whatever it is. There are more things in heaven and earth dreamt of in all your philosophies. So back off. Age cannot wither her, nor custom stale her infinite variety. You know, all the time we've been together, I've never believed a word you've said. <laughs> but I sure love hearing them. Well, seems that neither one of us could shed the other. Seems so. Quit trying to make sense of it. <laughs> I just show up and do your bidding and leave. Never know when I'll lay eyes on you again. Months, years, never. Yeah. There's no reason to leave now. I think it best. Well, look, we could always just. Not this time, Cole. I don't feel right. Another year and you'd be a free man. Yet something tells me you can throw it all away. Couldn't stand by and watch. I've been promised parole before. Oh, Alice. I grew up close to the heart of nature. In the forest, in the saddle, always on the move. To imprison me? It's like caging a wild bird. Goodbye, Cole. I did what you asked me to. Said I'm Now go down. Raise your glass to one last friend. Wondering what went wrong. It's just too much to hang on. Set them up, not only lonely fool for loving you. I guess my best wasn't good enough for you to be true. Now, what's this broken heart to do? I cannot tell you how excited I am to get this project underway. And since for all of you this is your first experience with moving pictures, uh, I'm going to take a moment and explain just a little bit about how this process works. It's now, art like no other. We start with nothing and then we... In two weeks, we will have a picture show that will excite thousands. Now, right now, you are being fitted for costumes. And outside, our crews are already hard at work determining where to set up the cameras. And I know you already have met Mr. Ohala. He is our armorer. I wanted to use real ammunition. Well, Mr. Gurman, we're going to have to set up for blanks. It's my job to avoid any accidents in this set. Nobody in the set or off the set, with the exception of the guards, is going to carry light ammo. Ohala, can I see you? Yes, 
see one of those blank cartridges? They make a big boom and then there's smoke everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Hara. Now, Mr. Goldman is going to give you a brief summary of the action. Pay close attention. It's a beautiful spring morning. The trees are in bloom, birds are singing, children are playing in the streets. Mr. Goldman, remember, uh, we are talking to the actors now, not the audience. Of course. Our desperados, the scourge of the West. Their dark hearts filled with malicious intent. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goldman. Thank you for that. Okay. All right. Now, our longest and largest scene is going to be with our antagonist. That's you. You're going to be staged in three different areas on here, and Miss Hathaway will discuss more of that tomorrow. Now, one of the difficulties in making a moving picture is that we often shoot out of sequence. So, we're gonna start with our most difficult scenes first. That's going to be the robbery itself. For two days, we're going to rehearse the robbery, and then on the third day, we'll roll the cameras. Remember to stay where we put you. That is your mark. If you move, you will ruin the composition of my shot. Film, my friends, is forever. And no matter what the fates bring our way, Bill Tillman and the Outlaws will be our legacy. Now, time to get to work. Damn, I never do get used to seeing that mess of scars. <laughs> Ancient ghost, continue to hunt. Eleven from Northfield alone. That uh, wasn't our best adventure there, Frank. Nope. Yet here you stay in body and soul. Evidently. Well, uh, at least I'll look good while Tillman humiliates me in front of the rest of the world. The upside is, though, he might be able to make me look 20 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late for guys like us. Perhaps. But perhaps it's not too late to set it right. Set what right, Cole? Northfield, Minnesota. Northfield? There ain't no set in that right, Cole. The minute we hauled out of that bank, we didn't have a chance. I mean, you still got the scars to prove it. It cost us dearly. I gotta set it right, Frank. And this might be my last chance. And the upside is getting to knock that self-righteous Bill Tillman off his high horse. Uh, there's nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. There's always a consequence, Cole. Perhaps. Frank, we were alive back then. Hell, they were writing books about us, the Robin Hoods of the West. Now, we're just fodder for the likes of Tillman. Forgotten relics from a forgotten age. You know, Cole, I... I, I got a good life here. I own my business. I'm making a living. I mean, yeah, it's a little boring, you know? I'm kind of bored out of my head. Every day's the same, you know? You're stitching this and measuring that. I'm like a old maid or something. But I got respect. But I stand for nothing. Oh, my God. What do you got in mind for me now, Mr. Satan? What if we rob the bank for real? Why? To humiliate the great Bill Tillman. Hell, if he has his way, we'll be laughing stock. <laughs> On the other hand, if we can turn the tables, rob that bank for real, <laughs> And it's Tillman and Masterson who be play the fools. And we become the legends. <laughs> we might become dead legends. No, I have no intention of dying. Frank, are you in? As long as it's not another Northfield. Now, how do you see this playing out, Cole? Come on, come on, come on. If whatever you two are planning, I want in. 
This calls for a drink. Hey, Pep, bring that tray over here. Oh, hey, miss your Alice yet? <laughs> We trust you. You bet you. All right. We're gonna need a diversion. Something big, something loud. Big and loud. That book? That's gonna make you lose your edge. Maybe it'll give us a different edge. Maybe you're not looking hard enough. <laughs> Joe, right now, you better just quit talking. Well, maybe... Shut it! Gentlemen. Octoon! Octoon! We're already behind schedule, but we haven't even started yet. If you think that I am here as just another pretty face, when we are finished, you will know better. Under my watchful eye, we, yes, we, will do the impossible and produce a wonderful film. Hathaway, Mr. Goldman, forgive me, but the mayor and I have a big surprise before we start our first day of rehearsal. Ladies and gentlemen, it has always been my pleasure on the first day of a new picture to do something very special. And I think you will all agree that this one belongs on the top of the heap. He is a writer, a producer, a director, and he's America's favorite cowboy. And he has taken time to lead the way for Bill Tillman and the Outlaws. And tomorrow, he is returning to California where he is going to star in his next epic film, Hell's Hinges. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. William Surrey Hart. the art of making pictures. It is like the breath of life to me. Their heart has made the country proud. And together, we will keep the best alive forever. Make the West live for us all. Adios, amigos. God bless you all, each and every one. The remarkable man of the West, William S. Hart. Da 
That was exciting. But as I was saying, over the next 10 days, we are going to plan and execute a daring robbery, a dangerous chase, a deadly shootout, and culminating will be a dramatic trial of some of the most nefarious desperados to ever stalk the West. In order to accomplish this before we are finished, you will be poked, you will be prodded, you will wallow in the dirt. You will be so exhausted when you go home at night, you'll just drop dead in your bed. But you will get up the next morning and you will be here at 6 a.m. Right. <laughs> Murphy and Cole Younger. Thank you. Okay, I need you both to try these on before I hand them up. Oh, come on, Frank, roll tuckered out. Uh, Can we do this Quit tomorrow? your belly aching, okay? I need you to put these on. You too, Murph. Listen, I got a really bad feeling about this. There's a hundred people. All it takes is one of them to upset the cart. Besides, I got a lot more to lose than the both of you. Come on, Frank. It's a cakewalk. <laughs> Look, by the end of tomorrow, we will know every move. And in addition to that, we will have the only guns that bark. Where did you... What about me? Now, I don't want a slaughterhouse, Murphy. But I do want you and your men to disarm the guards. Now, I'll be out of sight. So easy pickings. Then you all have their guns. But Murphy, you spill a drop of blood, and I'll stop your clock myself. All right, all right, Cole. We'll play it your way. But I want Tillman. He's mine. Now, I'll fill Joe and his brood in tomorrow, but I'm leaving the kid out of it. Now, he'd cave for sure. Besides, he's so moon-eyed over that producer's daughter that uh, we can't trust him. But the director has him holding the Desperado's getaway horses right in front of the livery. 
What more could we want, right? We'll go, we'll grab the horses, beat it out of town, leave the kid scratching his head. What about my share? How do I get my share? Check that barrel in front of the livery. It'll be there. But Murphy, something to chew on. Grab the money and hightail it. Save Tillman for another day. Let him play the fool for a while. Yeah, I'll play that hand as it's dealt. You know, by the time I'm done with you two, you'll be on the cover of the Saturday Evening Post. Marshal. For now. Morning, Marshal. Morning. It's quiet around here now, but all hell will break out shortly. You see anything different? I'm lucky if I can see anything these days. Well, someone pilfered my cannon. Pilfered? After all these years? Reckon so. <laughs> Kids. Yeah. To tell you the truth, I wish we would have never started all this. Action! Moving pictures demand action! You will remember that. Mr. James and Mr. Younger will enter the back and they will be watching all of you to make sure that there's no trouble with the law. Mr. Little Joe or Mr. Big Joe, you will be standing next to the bank. Mr. James will toss you money when he passes by, and you will run, pants on fire, shooting your guns in the air. Mr. Murphy, you want your men to stand on your marks, waiting to create a big noise to clear the streets with lots of smoke. Mr. Cherokee, do not look into the camera. Nobody look into the camera lens. You will ruin my shot. Mr. Chicken, you will be at the stable holding eins, zwei horses ready for the getaway. Now, Mr. Goldstein will stumble out of the bank yelling, they're robbing the bank, they're robbing the bank. Mr. Murphy, you will shoot at Mr. Goldstein and he will fall back into the bank. This is the cue for Mr. James or Mr. Younger to run out of the bank, guns blazing. Across town, Marshal Tillman and his deputies will come running. Mr. Murphy, you will then shoot at Marshal Tillman and you will miss. Marshal Tillman will then shoot at you and he won't miss. I like that part. Hmm, what if I don't cotton getting shot by the Marshal? Don't worry, Mr. Murphy. It's just a picture show.
behind till men closing in. I hopped a pony, rode that horse to hell down a bad man road. It's a long cold road. Grabbed the gun, took the turn. Sweetheart, I've been watching you with Russ. That convict they call Chicken Man. Daddy, the charges that got Sean put in prison are just a lot of nonsense. Yeah, I know. Even the warden said he didn't think the boy deserved to be there. But regardless, what do you see in him? Daddy, he's sweet. Kind. He would like more than anything to get his mother and his little brothers start a new life somewhere. Maybe raise a family. Girl, what are you hoping this is gonna lead to? I don't really know. But I like that he makes me laugh. You know, sweetheart, I've already lost your mother. <laughs> I just couldn't bear to lose you two, okay? Marshall? Take your places. Good. Now. Gods! Oh, my God! As you move about our town today, and you see men who have made bad choices in their lives, don't look down upon them with disdain and judgment. Look upon them with understanding and forgiveness in your hearts.
Now, Miss Edie, would you lead us in song? All right, gentlemen, I'm going to need you to move inside until you hear multiple gunshots, at which point you're going to come out of the jail and run down the street towards the bank. Around that corner. Around the corner that way. And I'm going to need you to run right past that camera I showed you earlier. Quick and easy. Fair. You going to be able to run around there? We'll say. Any questions? Is my tie straight? <laughs> Your tie looks great. All right, ready, gentlemen? Let's move. on the horses. Uh, well, nothing too special about holding the horses. Just wait until the dramatic chase. Galloping horses, roaring guns. Yeah. When's that supposed to be? In a couple of days. <laughs> Wish we were a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? I spent as much time with you as I could. John Russell, you're not suggesting. Oh, I ain't suggesting nothing. Well, what are you saying? Uh, Russell. Yeah. Mr. Russell, it's yeah. time to go. Um, I'm yeah. very interested in hearing what you have to say. They're robbing the bank! Good, good. Now, put yeah. down your steps. <laughs> Bing and shout the victory. Go with God. Gentlemen, please give us a minute while we reset the cameras. Mr. Goldstein, remember, your cue is when you hear the word action. Mr. James, Mr. Younger, your cue is when Goldman yells, now. You exit the bank, guns blazing.
part's coming up. You know what you're supposed to do? They're robbing the bank. Well, they're, yeah. they're, 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 they're robbing the bank? They're robbing the bank. Everyone, please stay right where you are. Once the robbers exit the bank, there will be gunfire. All the rest of the outlaws start shooting as well. Hurry up and wait. It's an expression. Mr. Murphy. I'll only be a minute. Get your place, Murphy? No, Cole, I'm right where I meant to be all along. That's not part of the plan, Murphy. Yeah, well, there's been a slight change in plan. No need to go there, Cole. Now, what is your name? Mordechai Goldstein. M my friends call me Mort. Mort? Well, I want you to do me a favor. A, a favor? What, what kind of favor? In case you haven't figured it out. These are real, son. I want you to take this bag, go to that safe and fill it with real money. I forgot the combinations. that help you to remember? Murphy, you see Cole, let this play out. Just another minute, gentlemen. Sorry, Mort. See? Nothing's changed. Mort, it wasn't meant to happen like this. I don't like this. Look, look, just stick with the plan. Now, when Pepper cuts loose, head for the horses. By the time the dust clears, we'll be halfway to Pine Ridge. Auction! That's your cue. You're up. for Murphy, Cole.
boys and mama out of here. Go, go. Let's go, boys. Bill! Sorry, Bill. I hope we can find a way to stop this. But it's all gone too far. You see Murphy? He's mad dog mean. Cole? Yeah, he's still looking for something that never was. It's all complicated. Anyway, I've gotten as close to the good book as I can. You do what you gotta do, Joe. But this ain't the end of it. Where's Murphy? Little Joe, fetch me one of them long guns. That's if Murphy's foolish enough to stick around town. Bar the door, hurry, before Ma leaves us. Help us, you got their attention. And our horses are out back. I say it's time to get out of here. Give us our share, we'll slap leather. No, no, I need you to hold on for a few minutes and keep these streets clear. I got unfinished business. Why should we? If you stick around, you can have my share. But I need you to nail anything that moves. Called Big Joe's put Bill in his own jail. Boys, stay away from the window.
why I'm running around. Oh, Frankie, Frankie, thank God you're safe. Stay with Mama. What the hell is going on there? I don't know, but you can sure bet that that lunatic Murphy is behind this. Attention, Malachi. Mal oh, those boys don't have the brains God gave a gopher. Woody. that old lady was driving. Come on, hurry up. Tench! Tench! Oh, God. Go check the livery. You can't be that stupid. You were weeks away from being a free man. We could have had... Oh, calm down, Missy. Stupid goes without saying. But... Oh, the fact of the matter is... Mr. Russell here was ignorant of the plot. Well, if he hadn't have been, perhaps he'd have done a better job of holding our horses. It wasn't my fault. They, they, they spooked and ran away. Oh, what's left in the livery? I, I don't know. One old mule and 50 chickens. Family reunion. Cover me. Stay here. force you to go along with the plan. Hey, <laughs> my my life's not going to change. And I'm not carrying any more lead. There they are. Oh, 
coal. Hell, what's one more? Huh. Now, Bill, it seems that we are rather ill-equipped to continue this impersonal exchange. Shall we settle this? Just you and me? Bill, no! done with you. Why'd you do it, Murphy? You had no chance. <clears throat> I needed to be free, Marshal. Kill you. Kill me. Either way, <sighs> I'm free. <clears throat> Damnation. <clears throat> Big Joe <clears throat> says maybe not. It's over. It's over. Nah. It ain't 
Martha. Tillman. For the record, let's say Frank had nothing to do with this. I... Oh. oh, this one's biting me pretty bad. I saw what you did, Cole. I won't forget it. Another Cole younger tale. Yeah. Full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Let's get him to the dock. I didn't know. Well, guess they ran out of gas. Look what we brought you, Marshal. It's hard to believe they left this behind. Yeah, it's a mystery. They were nowhere to be found. You just can't seem to keep yourself out of trouble, can you? Ain't what? <laughs> Whoa, where, where were you? I, oh my God! Sorry. Where were you? I wanted to make sure that John was all right. I'm John. sorry, I, I didn't I told, mean to I told her not to go after me. I'm but sorry. She... I'm sorry. I told you I'd make you a star, right? It's a mind of its own. It 
ain't our fault We gave it all we could This old world has forgot what it stood for We never lied We stayed between the white lines of our hearts Yeah, that's for sure We might have slowed way down Searching for ain't been found So let's keep on moving Let's keep on moving We might have slowed way down But we're keeping our dreams alive We ain't ready to lie no ground Cause one thing been thinking. Yeah? Well, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> I think there's a future in these moving pictures. Oh, no, 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 no. It's just a gust of wind. <laughs> we ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs>